journey to reclaim their health. When it comes to emergency room and trauma, we're really leaders in the world. But when it comes to overall health, we're mostly managing our pain and suffering. There are definite medications, but they're not turning the condition around. They're allowing you to live as long as you can without that much pain and suffering. So people are forced to look for other ways to manage their health concerns. They're asking the question, is it possible for me to turn the clock back and go to the point in my life where I wasn't sick? It could be five years ago or 10 years ago, at that point where their bodies hadn't broken down yet. Well, the science world, not the medical world, is really pointing towards looking very deep in the body at the cellular level. And when you look at that level, you start to see that if the person is ever going to change their health, they have to address helping the smallest unit of their body get healthy again. Normal cells perform many functions essential to maintaining good health. They must be able to take in nutrition, and eliminate waste or toxins. Normal cells must defend themselves from intruders like unfriendly bacteria, fungi, viruses, and free radicals, and repair the damage done by them. In addition, cells must work together as a team, communicating with other cells to achieve optimal organ and immune system function. Research has already proven our cells need certain essential nutrients. 26 different vitamins, 72 or more trace minerals, numerous fatty acids, and amino acids. Since our bodies don't produce these, we must get them from our diet. Recently, scientists have discovered that there are at least eight sugars, called monosaccharides, that our cells also need for optimal function. Inside cells, these sugars combine with protein strands and form complex structures called glycoforms. The exterior of a healthy cell is covered with a dense forest of these glycoforms. Glycoforms can exchange infinite combinations of information depending on their shape and charge. Glycoforms are present on the surface of all cells and actually prevent viruses, bacteria, and other enemy cells from entering a healthy cell by blocking the entrance to the cell's surface. Glycoforms can hold on to an enemy cell until an immune system cell can arrive to destroy it. Healthy immune system cells can also accurately identify normal cells and not interfere with their function. Cells covered with glycoforms enable clear and accurate cell-to-cell -cell and system-to-system -system communication, creating an information superhighway within the body. Glycoforms play a vital role in every human physiological process. Immune system response, tissue regeneration, cell replication, growth, and structural stability. They are even responsible for the attraction of sperm cells to an egg cell surface to foster fertilization. If a cell does not receive the nutrition it needs, it cannot produce energy, and it really loses its function. Healthy cells don't function optimally without glyconutrients. That's all there is. We now know how important these eight sugars are to human health. The problem is, only two, glucose and galactose, are readily available in our modern diets. A fraction of these other six sugars can be gotten through diet, but modern agricultural methods, food processing, widespread use of toxic pesticides and chemical fertilizers have all but eliminated them from our food supply. It's only really been since a little before World War II that what we now call conventional methods, that's uh, fertilizer and pesticides, even came into being. What was conventional farming for thousands of years, we're calling alternative farming and organic farming, and what we're calling conventional is actually a new, a new experiment. The connection of healthy soil to healthy plants and to healthy people cannot be underestimated. Most farmers don't use organic fertilizer because of the economics. The government farm programs reward the use of conventional fertilizers. 
and then also many farmers grow for big agribusiness companies. When you're dealing in mega farms, an ideal crop is to pick the entire crop one day, get the pickers out of the field, get the money out, plow it down and put another crop in. That's like the perfect scenario. Crops are selected for uniform maturity and the ability to harvest quicker than they should. And that makes a huge difference in the protein content and the nutrient content. Optimally, you want the fruits and vegetables to stay on the vine or on the tree or on the plant for as long as possible because in those last few days before ripening is when the essential sugars are brought to the fruit or vegetable. Everything that is not picked at its peak, everything that is shipped any length of time begins to lose its nutritional value. I compared the nutritional content of food from 1982 with what statistics are for 1999. I was amazed at the nutrient decline in many fruits and vegetables. Overall, it was an average 25% decline in nutrition across the board. That is staggering. It's shocking. If we are losing 25% of our nutritional content in 20 years, what are we going to have in 20 years from now and 20 years down the road? Pretty soon we're going to be eating water and a little fiber and that's going to be it. The body to an extent can make glyconutrients, that's the job of the liver. However, that is an emergency mechanism and we're making our own glyconutrients. It's basically a state of starvation. If you don't have enough of the right type of sugars, you have um, faulty processing. With the faulty processing, things can go wrong. Without vital sugars and a variety of other micronutrients, cells cannot create glycophores. The result is a breakdown in cellular communication and immune system response. Depleted cells are unable to defend themselves effectively, so cell structures can be damaged and are not effective in healing and regenerating. In this weakened state, cells cannot communicate effectively, compromising the body's ability to identify problems. They are also unable to destroy pathogens such as viruses, bacteria, and fungi, and cannot identify mutated cells so the immune system can eliminate them. For example, when a person suffers from an autoimmune disorder, their compromised immune system may respond inappropriately and treat altered normal cells as intruders and destroy them. It may allow mutated cells to proliferate, or the immune system may not respond at all leaving the body extremely vulnerable to many types of infectious agents. Because they're not getting everything they need from their diet, people are doing one of two things. The first thing they do is nothing, and many people are ending up with chronic diseases or they're getting sick more often. Their health is somehow degraded as a result. And other people are using supplements, including supplements of sugars. We need to eat the right foods to make the right structures to have optimal health. There's a break in the link here because we can't get that food anymore in today's modern diet. Therefore, there's a need to supplement with a type of nutrient called a glyconutrient. When I first learned about these glyconutrients, the concepts made sense to me, but I was very skeptical about using them. It seemed like there were a lot of people making claims that it could help with all different sorts of health conditions. And any time I see that, I throw my hands up and I say, you know, that this can't be true. The big shift for me was seeing how many different countries were researching this. The University of Oxford have their own glycobiology institute where they were studying this as early as the late 1980s. Countries all over the world, Japan, Germany, Switzerland, Finland, New Zealand, Australia, were looking at these nutrients and their clinical application, as well as in the United States at John Hopkins, MIT, University of California, Irvine. Once I realized how crucial these supplements are for human health, I felt compelled to offer them to my patients.